this is a country that is the anchor of peace in a region that has turmoil in the government. Kenya is an anchor state. It is a well-renowned democracy. We do elections every five years. We have absolute respect for human rights. And we have secured this country in terms of security. Make sure that everybody is able to come to this country and do whatever you want to do without any fear. Again, we have tightened our security system around a region that is a bit uh, volatile. This is a country where you want peace and you want a good environment to come. It's here. Again, this is a good destination for investment. It is a gateway to East and Central Africa and indeed Africa. We have got good financial systems. We have banks that are interconnected across the world. Again, our connectivity in terms of internet is good. So when you are here, you can transact, transact business across the world, from the comfort of your hotel room, from the game park, from everywhere. So I really want to urge you to keep on coming here, not just for matters of cooperative movement, but also come tourism, come for business, come for holiday, and come enjoy your stay here. I want to really applaud our CS for cooperatives. Uh, Simon Chengu is passionate and he has vigor to drive this ministry. And the president, in his own, in his own wisdom, there before, the cooperative docket was a small department in the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. But the importance of the cooperative movement is such that it required a full-fledged ministry and a state department. And the PS is just the right guy who is driving it and driving it well, mm -hmm. supported. <laughs> they are very energetic and committed and focused principal secretary. So the president and I are very happy with our two guys. Yeah. <laughs> they are driving us in the right direction. Very happy to have seen you here. Please, when you come again to Kenya, please call on me uh, so that you can have a chat. And I look forward to attending the conference. And any other uh, meeting that you want us to attend, you can tell the series, we will be available. Otherwise, I'm very happy to have listened to you. What you have said, we're going to work together. Uh, the world is a global village. We all want to benefit from what you know and benefit from the little that we know so that we put things together. Mm -hmm. My boss, President William Hunter, tells us every day that uh, a good idea should give way to a better idea. Mm -hmm. And a better idea ultimately must give room to the best idea. Mm -hmm. That can only happen when people talk and consult and share feelings. And that is what you have come to do. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you to continue having discussions continue interacting, continue exchanging views and ideas, let us build a stronger cooperative movement to support for the world and good for the inhabitants of this great world. Thank you very much. We've witnessed a tremendous growth of over 12% in the last one year. For example, Your Excellency, the total assets of the cooperatives in Kenya last year was 890 billion as we speak today we are now at 920 billion and we are projecting by end of this year we will have achieved our target of 1 trillion in terms of assets <laughs> Your Excellency, in terms of mobilizing deposits and this is about talking engaging members the building trust we are in the business of selling and managing trust. We are trustees of members. And we have, when we, in last year, November, we were at 608 billion. As we speak today, Your Excellency, we are at 620 billion in deposit. And we are projecting by end of this year, we will be at 770 billion in terms of deposit. That will mean that over 30% of the Kenya deposit, both in banks and circles, 30% of this money will be in circles. That is a significant statement about the role and importance of the circles. Your Excellency, in terms of loans, we've also stretched 
our lending capacity. We were at 667 billion last year. Today, we are now at 680 billion. And we are projecting, Your Excellency, by end of this year, we will have hit our target of 820 total loan portfolio among our circles. Finally, Your Excellency, in terms for us to fund and manage this business, we need strong capital base. Our members have not been left behind. We were, our total capital mobilized by last year was 160 billion. By June, we were at 200 billion. By December, we expect to have hit, in our capital mobilization, 240. Your Excellency, this cooperative movement can only succeed through constant engagement with our members. Also to mention that during the Saka Congress in Botswana, where the president of the uh, Eric Masisi and the CS was part of uh, the, the, the conference representing the Excellency, uh, Dr. William Ruto. Uh, one of the things that the president mentioned on the table that we are seated was the government of Botswana was going to do something and uh, the CEO, Jeff William, was part of the conversation. I like to be open and transparent to mention that the government of Botswana has initiated a process of providing a postcard with diplomatic status. We are now preparing papers and uh, the process, I know we've been going back and forth on this. The CS has been supportive, but I know the team here, when we discussed with our close leaders, they felt, I'm sorry, Kefrile, they felt we need to find a way of it happening in Kenya not in Botswana because of the geographical location of Kenya. So on behalf of the team and the influence that Akoska is having on the continent, I'd like to request for support for Akoska to attain the diplomatic status that I think we've been asking for a while. The international engagement that Akoska is having, this huge recognition of Akoska globally and I know in terms of employment in the country, Akoska has employed numerous uh, leaders. Uh, I've also supported a number of people have been employed to support other countries who come from Kenya. That's my humble plea through the CS, uh, because we know that if that happens, it will make the work that we're doing, not just financial cooperatives, but cooperatives that fall not in Kenya, but the continent better. This is an opportunity for us to learn from you as well as to impart maybe some lessons learned from our past on things and how we operate as credit unions. We believe this CEO Summit by Acosta is an opportunity for all of our organizations to grow and learn how to be better and how to serve our communities and to serve our members. We believe these shared lessons make us better in our operations. Now each of the credit union CEOs that you see here have different stories they serve different groups of memberships, and they have different policies and different procedures. But what unites all of us, the SACOs and credit unions, is our fixated focus on serving the members and the community. We believe that one of the best ways of achieving financial stability and financial success for communities and households is through a cooperative system that the SACOs represent. Because with our way of doing business, we can help households rise regardless of where they started in their financial journey. One of the conversations we've been having here in the last few days has been on servant leadership. It is our understanding that servant leadership is an advanced way of leading an organization. It causes the leaders to focus on the stakeholders of the organization, most importantly the members, but also everybody in the community that's connected to the cycles in some way. And that kind of leadership helps us do our business better. The cross-continental diplomacy that's occurred from our country and other countries through ACOSCA, we believe makes all of our organizations better and lead, for, lead to better communities for everyone. I understand very, very well the importance of good regulation, a robust regulatory framework. And in the United Kingdom, I think we do have a very good regulatory framework that credit unions sit within. And we've had that since 2002, and it's been a blessing because when we moved SACOs into the banking framework, it meant we had security for our members and every pound in a SACO in the United Kingdom 
is secure and is safe. So no member since 2002 has ever lost their savings in a SAP in the United Kingdom. But what I also wanted to talk about today was the work that ACOSCA is doing in the regulatory space. Like Lois, I've been coming, not as long as Lois, but I've been coming since 2014 uh, to Kenya and, and keep coming back because of your beautiful hospitality mm. here. But what I have seen and what I have learned and what I hope I've been contributing is to the work that Acosca is doing in the regulatory space. Because we do know that there is great regulation here with SASRA, but there's not great regulation across the whole of the continent. And the Academy has been very instrumental in bringing not only people like ourselves into Kenya, to the Academy, to the other countries in Africa, to help ensure that there is a strong regulatory framework. So there's a lot of work that has been done in that space and continues to be done. And we call it learn and share because we're learning from each other. I'm learning every time I come to, to Africa, but hopefully I'm sharing as well. And that's the same for all of my colleagues who are here today. And particularly, I wanted to mention the work that uh, ACOSCA has done in forming a regulators roundtable, bringing regulators from across the continent together to learn and share with each other because that's critically important. It's critically important that it's not just Kenya, and I know you will appreciate that, that has good regulation, but it means that the whole of the continent has to have good regulation because we have to protect every African, whether they're a farmer, whether they're a school teacher, whether they're a police officer, we have to protect everyone. And ACOSCA has been doing an amazing job in bringing resources in, bringing ideas in, and taking those ideas and helping the whole of the continent learn and share from each other to create that robust regulatory environment. Because it's on all of us to protect every SACO, build strong SACOs, protect every member, protect every member's savings, because many of our members are the people who have the least financial capability or the least financial resilience if something goes wrong, if they have an emergency. But if they have a SACO behind them, then they can they can help themselves to build a, a very secure financial 